we got, the, the world is just, just burning. Just like the Bible said it would. It's just the craziest thing. You know, people from Atlanta contact me telling me that Atlanta is just gone crazy. And you know, this is gonna sound very chauvinistic, but you know, I'm already in trouble. So, uh, you know, all the women controlling everything in Atlanta, I mean, yeah. Yeah, now you're getting ready. Now you're seeing the emotional response to stuff. You know, because a woman, you know, when she sees something go down, she automatically, it's inherent in her to picture that as one of her kids. You cannot do that if you're a nurturer. If you're a nurturer, the first thing you think about, that could have been my baby. No matter how old he is. That's just inherent of a woman, and it's okay. That's the way you're supposed to be. So the dude that, I mean, what, he took the cops, tase him? And tase, didn't he tase the cop? He tried to? Did he actually succeed? Yeah, and so they shot him and killed him, and now the Black Lives Matter is on it. His Black Lives Matter. Man, tase me and watch what happened. With my taser. I'm the police. Like, why didn't he know he was gonna die when he did that? Because that's what I would know. I would know that. Anybody would know that? I would know that if I tase a cop, I'm gonna die. Anybody know that? Who, who in here does not understand? We need to help you. We don't wanna lose you. We don't wanna lose you to that. So let me make sure everybody has a good understanding of what happens when you fight a cop. It's time to have a come to Jesus moment with your children. Sit them down, Jay Bryan, and explain to them the consequences and repercussions of tussling with a cop. Yeah. But black lives matter. That's, that's, that's who y'all are ready to go protest and boycott. And then in the Mad Max zone in Seattle, <laughs> in Thunderdome, they beat up a preacher, a street preacher. In the autonomous zone, where there's no law. I explained that to Yahweh, but man, the Lord is so prophetic. No, I, the Lord is so prophetic. Y'all remember me explaining that to you, how the settlers settled and how lawlessness moved yeah. west yeah. to get away? Yeah. Who remember that? Yeah. See, somebody don't remember. And I explained how they settled in the east, mm -hmm. but as they began to establish laws, the lawless people or the ones who didn't want to submit the law yeah. migrated west. Yeah. And so that's why the most western part of the United States is the most lawless part. California, Oregon, uh, Washington State, all of that. It's just lawless. So they were the first to allow the gay stuff. They're the first to allow the weed. They're the first to allow everything that is lawless. And now they set up a zone where the law is not allowed. They call it an autonomous zone. It's, it's that, that's the right word, right? Yeah. And there's no law allowed at all. Yeah, and they stand in there with guns and everything. And you walk in there, there's no law allowed. Everything goes. They're doing crack in there. Yeah. They're naked in there. They just doing whatever. No law. And so a preacher was trying to preach to them, and they attacked him. Yeah. That's our world now. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, yeah. So they passing, yeah, and then while they got all this distraction going on, and you know, they just, ooh, this stuff is just so stupid. Some of it. Some of it's stupid. I know somebody, you know, I mean, but, you know, there is police brutality. That's everything. Everything is going on. 
all wickedness, everything conceivable to man is happening right now. So you're not going to just pick some isolated police brutality events. They're isolated. Numbers wise, they're isolated. Yeah. Yeah. And so, amen. Well, it's time to pray and protect your family. Amen. This is not, amen. Because no matter what they do in the natural, we still have the spiritual advantage. Anybody got a spiritual advantage? Amen. I believe that we were destined and appointed for such a time as this. I'm so ready for this. I'm so ready. This is it. Look at somebody and say, this is it. You here. This is it. This is it. That's nothing behind this. This is it. You know why I say that? Because the Bible said this is it. This isn't the last days that your grandmama told, that was going on when your grandmama was talking to you. This is it. And this is not the time to wild out. This is not the time to fall away. Amen. All right, well, got another message um, today. I mean, I didn't get it today, but we have another one for you today. Uh, Adam, AdamandBeliever.com forward slash last hour dot PDF. We're going to be talking about last, the last hour anointing because this is the last hour. This is the last hour. Amen. And there's just all kinds of stuff happening. I mean, they, they're, they're about to release genetically modified mosquitoes. gonna be some big old humans with wings once they evolve. <laughs> they don't know what they do. They're just doing stuff. Ah, sometimes, sometimes you too smart. They're just doing stuff. We are in the end time. This is what all of the sermons have been for. This is what all the preparation has been for. This is what all the praying has been for. This is what all the fasting has been for this time. Amen. I was driving up here this morning and I went under the underpass and some dudes with flags, Africa flags. I wanted to go up there and tell them, I'll send you. I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna send you to, the, to, to Africa. I'll let you be with them. They know they ain't trying to go to Africa. No shirts on, waving African flag. Yeah, and scared Caucasians, just blowing and waving. <laughs> we, have, we have several, we have a lot of uh, Caucasian people. Don't you be scared, don't you buy this stuff. You don't owe us nothing. You don't owe us nothing. We all sinners. We all are sinners. We all have sin and come short of the glory of God. And any man that think he does not have sin deceives himself. In God's eyes, we're all sinners that need to be saved. We all need forgiveness. We all need to be reborn, remade, renewed, recreated. Oh, some, there's some black folks in here that don't like that. Yeah, you, you, you weighing, weighing stuff on the scale, your scales of justice. You better let the Holy Ghost balance them scales. Because on those scales, we all deserve death. Out there marching and no restitution and repercussions and, and, and reparations. Pay your child support. Let's catch that up. Yeah, repercussions and reparations and uh, don't forget repossessions. 
pay your bills. How about that? That ain't got nothing to do with the white man. You could have been an alien in there getting that loan. He'd have still gave it to you. You could have been green, speaking a whole other language. Ring, ding, boom, ding, ding, ding. Uh, just sign right here, bro. I don't know what you just said, but this is how much it's going to cost. We're just not doing that in here. I'm, 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 you know, a lot of times I preach and say these kind of things to run folks off. Because I want you to know, like I uploaded some stuff yesterday. I don't ever upload on Saturday. I'm uploading Black Lives Matter because I want them off my page. Get away from me. Get, get gone. If you with the Black Lives Matter, get away from me. I am not with a lesbian witch movement. I ain't siding with no witches. I ain't siding with no lesbians. I ain't siding with no George Soros. You ain't manipulate me. Get that junk away from me. Get off my page. Get off! Boy, I got the best moderators in the world, boy, because Amy and Jay Brown, they take joy and pleasure in blocking folks. Oh, yes. Block! Hand all the way back here. I mean, are we going to stand before God and make something worse? Like what somebody did to us worse than what we did? Do you think God is going to... Is God... Would God even listen to that? But Lord, what they did... And God is like, but I've been blessing you. What does that have to do with you? I mean, but it's our color. All y'all the same color to God. I'm not judging folks about how close they live to the sun and how much shade they had. Man, I'm preaching it. We need to just get going. Last week we had, what, 43, 40 some people in the overflow? Some of these folks. <laughs> Don't park here. No, you got to really want the truth of the word if you're going to be here. Amen. Don't waste space. Leaving here and got the black lives. No, you, you, don't do that. Go be with them. It's not doing that in here because it's satanic. It's satanic to hold your brother in contempt when we all should be held in contempt. That's called unforgiveness. We don't practice that. We're all equal. We don't bring up 400 years. And you ain't suffered none of them. You crazy. Walk right out of here and get in a new Honda Accord. <clears throat> 400 years of oppression. Because you know what it does? <laughs> it just cuts the Holy Ghost out of the picture. You can't have any fruits of the Spirit if you're still mad about something you know nothing about. You can't. You can't operate in that. You can't operate in love if you're trying to get somebody back. How did they handle oppression in the Bible? They did what God said. They waited on God to overthrow the leadership. Yeah. They didn't start a coup to go against the leader and destroy the leader. Remember when they did that to King Saul? As much foolishness as Saul did to David. Nobody deserved it worse than Saul. Saul was caught up in his feelings and a demon spirit. And he persecuted David all day, all night. Didn't even have a reason. That was before Bathsheba. He didn't even have a reason, just going after him, going hard after him. And God told him, no, don't touch him. Let me judge him. And people don't realize when he said that, that stirred up something in David to the point to where when they finally came and told him, hey, yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, Saul is dead. And, you know, he was hanging there. I mean, he was laying there. So he told me to go on and kill him. And I'm, I went ahead and just put him out of his middle. And David just went crazy and said, oh, no, off comes your head. 
Give me your head. Because you don't overthrow leadership. Yeah, you move. That's what you do. You move. So homeboy did that. He should have joined the Amalekite. He should have went and joined another organization. But get out of Israel because Israel had a leader. You don't overthrow leadership. You don't touch leadership. You let God handle leadership. Amen. But well, that's what's wrong with these folks. Little girl, four or five years old, disrespecting the president. Hand another mic. You're a bad leader. You're the... Yeah, and it's it just going viral. That's cute. And if it wasn't for Trump, we wouldn't be sitting in here having church right now. And the ones that hate him, they at home. They can't get back in their buildings because they think he set them up to catch the COVID. They told me that. That's a true story. That's a true story, Elder. They told me that. No, man, don't you go in your church. It's a setup. Trump is setting all the black churches up. So if they go in their churches, they all go and catch COVID and die. So we ain't going in church. That's a true story. Your church, the church you're called to, that God, did he, God called you, but you're not going in because, and I'll even, I'll even say it like this, because the white man that you mad at said you can't go in. So either he has power or he doesn't. Y'all confusing me. I like Trump. Now, I ain't, I ain't telling you to vote for him. I didn't even vote for him. I just like the way he rolled, because he real. He don't care. He ain't thinking about you. He ain't thinking about you. He know he already won. He knows he's back in. He's back in. He's back. Get ready. Because everybody that's mad and upset and going crazy, their votes don't count for nothing. You ain't learned that? Them same folks that's, oh, sorry about your struggle. I'm sorry. When they get in that booth, Trump. I know I'm preaching. I'm preaching in the house. Folks don't like it this real, Elder. They don't like it this real. Oh, oh. We did you so wrong. Oh, it's a shame what was done to you, Trump. <laughs> there they go. Trump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he don't care. He's thinking about y'all, please. It's all rigged anyway. Whoever they want is going to be in it. All, all of this stuff is it's so orchestrated. That's why you got to trust the true and the living God. Amen. Some stuff you get down. Has this ever happened to anybody when you really trust God? You get down to pray about something and the Holy Ghost just say, don't pray for that. That's dumb. That ain't what you think it is. And you just get up. That happens to me. He said, that ain't what you think it is. I said, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened when we were getting back in this building. I was like, Lord, what are we going to get rid of? I was like, it ain't what you think it is. This ain't got nothing to do with no COVID. And why the regular flu just go away? Where is that? Why can't I have a regular flu? Can, can I just have the flu? It don't exist no more. All the regular flu has migrated into COVID. So you can't just have a regular cough and regular chest pains and, and, and <laughs> you can't just have Chills. That don't exist no more. You have it now. 
all is lost. You can't have a cold no more. You're in the wrong section at CVS, folk looking at you. Dude, can I get these cough drugs? I got a cough. It's not a deadly whooping cough. It's just a regular cough. Ooh, I woke up this morning with some, you know, some breathers. What? Better go get tested. I was talking to somebody the other day, and it's like, pass pray for me, you know, my, I'm short, short of breath. And so I'm going to the doctor to get tested. I said, well, you don't have to go to the doctor. Let me tell you what they're going to tell you. You got COVID. <laughs> we can settle this right now without a trip. You have the COVID. The COVID. <laughs> Where is the regular flu? I'm back to that. This time last year, folks had the flu. And they had a pretty bright future ahead of them. That was still a pathway to life and betterment. Like they still made plans for the future. Now if you got the flu, you gotta gather all the kids around. Y'all just in case something happened. Can folks have the flu? That's a real question. Does it still exist? So from now on, flu's gone. Amen. Then somebody sent me, and I tweeted it. So they said, in California, the maximum capacity for a gathering is how many people was it? Twelve. Twelve. But the maximum. <laughs> Protest. <laughs> the capacity is what? A hundred. Y'all still believe them? Somebody lying. Somebody is lying. Last hour anointing. Amen. I just had to get all of that out. <laughs> Amen. That's okay. Amen. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Love to see y'all. I'd love to see your faces. Amen. All right. Luke 4 and 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, this is Jesus, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So Jesus went into the synagogue to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Elijah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is what he read. This is the prophecy from Elijah. The Spirit of, of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable what? Year of the Lord. So, this is what was written in the book, the Spirit of the Lord. Look, somebody say the Spirit of the Lord. So the, so the Spirit of God is being poured out in this last hour. You know, you have the level of God's Spirit. You, you have as much as you want to have. You may not have as much as you'd like to have, but you have as much as you want to have. What you have is what you want to have. Nobody walking around, man, I mean, how do I get the... No, you have the amount you want to have. Yeah, 
your decisions, how you pray, how you spend time with the Lord in his word, whatever, is going to lead to how much of his spirit you have. That's the level you chose. I know I'm, uh, thank you, Elder. Folks scared to amen that. But that's what they, you, ha- look at somebody and say, you have what you want. Yeah, you have what you want. That's you. Don't come looking at me and, oh, brother, I mean, we need, I need a new level of, a, then go get it. I need them to pour the spirit out. Then go, go get it poured on you. Why you in there telling me about it? But it's stuff you don't want to give up. Amen. It's moves you don't want to make. It's stupid stuff you like to keep doing. Yeah. But God's spirit is being poured out in this last hour. Acts 2 and 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. How many of y'all believe this is the last days? He said in the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall, see, shall dream dreams. This started on the day of Pentecost. That's what Peter stood up and said. This is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel. That's where I got this passage. He's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and he's been pouring it out ever since for the time that we're living in. The end time started on the day of Pentecost. But they do have an expiration date. And that date is right around the corner. I mean, let's just take the the spirit, the Holy Ghost Church Bible. Let's take all of that out of it. Have you ever seen anything like this in your life? Worldwide? So you could go back to the 70s and say, well, they were, you know, brothers with the afros and the pics and the Black Panthers, they was out there doing stuff. Not worldwide. This is global. They in England. Block lives matter. What? What did you just say? know what you're talking about. Like, there's no discrimination over there. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, it's global. This is global. I was talking to my grandfather a few weeks ago, two, maybe on his birthday, two weeks ago, whatever. He turned 94? 94. Coherent. Talking about the word. And I said, I said, yeah, I said, granddad, I ain't never seen nothing like this. He said, Hold up, son. Let me tell you something. He said, I'm 94 years old, and I have never seen anything like this. Now, you know how old 94 is? That's 1920. Who's the math person in here? Oh, that's you. What is it? What is it? 1926. You saw everything. You saw don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. <laughs> do what do what? You saw hidey high, hidey ho. <laughs> you saw I feel good. <laughs> Heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> you saw uh, you saw everything. The twenties. And he said, I have never seen anything like this. This outpouring is proof that God loves us because his spirit comes to fix what is wrong with us. So the outpouring of the spirit is a love outpouring. It comes as proof that he loves us because in this outpouring, he's going to give us everything we need. John 14 and 16, I will pray the Father, he shall give you another what? Comforter or form of comfort, something to comfort you during this time that he may abide 
with you forever. So his love is going to give you something to comfort you during this time. His love is going to answer your needs during this time. His spirit. His love is going to send the spirit. He's going to pour out his spirit upon us to show us how much he loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his spirit to us to give us directives, instructions, and prophetic insight so we will not have to guess at our futures. See, when you feel with the spirit, you can be watching the news and you know 98% of what they're saying don't have nothing to do with you. Because you feel with the spirit. So because I'm filled with the spirit, I got my orders. Long as I keep, long as I keep my home together, long as I love my husband or wife, love my children, long as we all on the same page, we're going to be good during this time. Yeah, we're going to be good. And even if that situation isn't good, we're going to let God work it out to where we will be good. You know, everybody's situation is not going to be ideal. Amen. Some of us are trying to live, live down stupid stuff. Anybody ever done something stupid? Amen. The reason why we don't point fingers at stupid stuff is because we've all done it. Some of us just didn't get caught as bad. That don't mean it wasn't dunked. <laughs> you know, we, we just, you, you can't go to point fingers. Amen. So everybody's situation is so some folks. The Spirit of God is going to come to help you work out your situation. Because your situation is complex and full of foolery and buffoonery. Yeah, and so it's going to take the power of God to help work that situation out. Instructions. Comforter. That's what a comforter is. Don't go to, you know, you, some of us, we just want comfort without answers. No, the Spirit didn't like that. It's not going to just hold you while you be dumb. No, the Holy Ghost come to bring you answers to help you deal with the situation. Go in there and do work. Anybody in there have to do work? How many of you, the work was hard? Some of it you didn't want to do. Mm, but God said, do the work. You'll get the results. Amen. I know, I know I'm preaching to you. Hand claps going to thin out. Somebody's still mad about Black Lives Matter. But he loves us so much, he sent his spirit. His spirit's going to give us the directives, instructions. Prophetic insight means the spirit is going to show us what's going to happen with certain situations where we just keep our hands off of it. Then we don't have to guess at our futures. John 16 and 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will do what? Guide you in how much truth? How much truth is he going to guide you in? How much truth? All. Uh, Man, why wouldn't you sign up for this? All truth? All truth. That means the lie isn't going to overtake me. That means the lie isn't going to catch me and destroy me. Not the lie. He's going to lead and guide me in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but who, whoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you what? He's going to show you what? things to come. So while people are watching the news panicking, you're going to see things to come. This is that spirit. Amen? So, the spirit of the Lord comes upon you. I mean, it's come upon me to preach the gospel according to what Jesus read. So I'm going to break that down and then I'm going to let you go. I've been up here for a long time already, so I'll try to cut this stuff short, but man, it's just a lot to say. Amen. You know, when I was outdoors, the messages was shout. And then when no one was in here, they were 30 minutes. Back to the old self, I guess. He preaches the gospel. This is the, uh, 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 the spirit of the Lord preaches the gospel to the poor. The good news to those that are poor financially and poor what? Spiritually. So you're poor financially and poor spiritually. You, you know, when you're poor financially, you don't need money. Your problem is not money. Look at somebody and say, your problem's not money. When you don't have money, your problem is not money. It's not. There are folks that 
lived off one sixteenth of what you make. So the problem is not money. Now maybe you can't have a flat screen TV with an Apple TV attached to it and Wi-Fi. Folks, time they broke and have Wi-Fi. Get rid of that. The word of God is rich and able to give us contentment in times of lack and power in times of spiritual warfare. So this is what the gospel does. It gives us contentment in times of lack. So when you poor, you don't pray for money. You just start shedding stuff. Oh, listen. Oh, listen to the claps. That's what they don't want to do. You're not broke. You have things of value. Get to shedding. Oh, God, you have to make a way. No, he don't. A way for you to what? Keep that car? Look at somebody. Oh, but he said, not one thing shall leave my... He didn't say that. <laughs> what are you talking about? You don't... Yeah. Sometimes you're going to go through situations. And God wants you to... He wants to see how much you love the stuff you have. Yeah. Now, you know, you'll graduate to the point to where he don't have to test you like that. But some of y'all are in that test right now. Because you never passed it. So to the poor, he's going to preach the gospel. And he's going to hold you right there until you get the gospel. Until you seek ye first the kingdom. Yeah, because you get right there and then you make a dumb decision. And he's tired of that dumb decision. So he's going to hold you there until you make a better decision. Oh, you better listen to me today. I'm preaching under the anointing of God. I promise you I am. Yeah, he'll hold you right there. Why do I always keep coming back to this? Why does this keep happening? It always happens. And if you really look at it, it's a certain pattern. And it's a pretty good four-year, five-year, three-year, whatever it is, it's really consistent. It's a consistent pattern of you walking through that same wilderness. It's because you haven't passed the test to get out. The last time you were there, you made a bad decision. This time you're there, you're making another bad decision. God has equipped you with knowledge, surrounded you with wise counsel. You know the answer. Can't do it. And right there, you'll stay. That's why you don't need money. You need the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. You can keep leaving churches. You keep leaving churches and wherever you go, it's going to be the same thing. Look at your track record. How many churches have you been to? So the word of God is rich and able to give us contentment. When we're poor and don't have, he's able to keep us content. God is so good, he can make it to where you don't even know you're poor. I mean, you know you don't have certain things, but you don't know that you're just poor. You're not sitting around talking about it. Oh, if I just had more money. No. Amen. Me and my wife look back and we wonder how we got over. <laughs> what were we doing? I mean, we was making it. Wow. When I first got married, I was making $70 a week. Look at somebody. What? That was what was consistent. So my pastor let me play for the youth choir. So I, he was giving me $70 a week. All the rest I made, just little odd jobs, stuff I could figure out, whatever. But for the most part, and I was very industrious. My wife would tell you, I mean, I can do all kinds of stuff. I'm not saying that to brag on myself. I'm pretty smart. So I can figure stuff out. I can do stuff. I mean, I can, I can just make some money. But God wouldn't let me make any money. He had me in a place that I had to graduate from. Didn't understand it at the time. Other folks didn't understand. But we lived very content there. I was good with it. And I would tell my wife, if this is it, I'm good with it. This is just the way it'll be. 
We just did what we had to do. And then in times of power, in times of the spiritual warfare, and that was the thing. I was broken the natural, but I had some spiritual power. It was weird. I was like, why can't I take some of this and bring it? It can't pay no bills with this, Lord. It just it leaves as quick as it comes. I cast out devils, but I can't talk to the banker. Yeah, because God is going to take you through a period sometimes to get you ready for what he has for you. Amen? That don't mean you're going to be rich later. Once he makes you content, you good with whatever. Amen. Some of these brothers coming in, these young brothers coming here, and if I see them dressing too flashy and stuff, and your marriage is uh, a year, two years in the mouth, I, I will I step to you. Be like, bro, your shoes cost more than your wedding. Don't you lighten up, man? Lighten up. What you doing? Don't I do that? Yeah, lighten up. You'll have time for that later. Right now, just first things first. Amen. Because that's what I had to do. If I look back at old pictures, I used to dress like Fred Sanford. <laughs> I didn't care. Man, will they tie up the shoes? Then I'm putting them on. I didn't care. I didn't need a Nike check. Somebody's like, oh, but I do. Oh, I do. It's a different day, Elder. <laughs> Heal the brokenhearted. Anybody ever had their heart broken? Hey, Amen. And it's always somebody close that does it. Isn't that the truth? That's because people that aren't close can't break your heart. You ain't thinking about them. It's always somebody close. David said if it had been my enemy, I could have planned for this. But the power of God comes to heal the brokenhearted. The good news of Jesus heals our broken hearts by shifting our worldly focus to a what? Spiritual focus. That's how you get your heart healed. People want to know, how do you mend the broken heart? Take it out of the natural, shift it to the spiritual. That way you'll see what that person is doing as the devil and not them. Yeah, you take it and make it the devil. You know why people don't like to do that? Well, one, they like to blame people. But the main reason they don't like to do that is because if I do that, I got to do that with everything. Even my own actions. Then I start saying, oh, well, I hurt people too. Oh, then I really can't be that broken hearted because I broken heart. When we hear of God's love for us, we know that whatever situation or circumstance we're in, he can see us through it. He's done it before, and he will what? Has he done it before for anybody? Isn't it so funny how you could be in something, and it seems so terrible, but the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, will come and comfort you by reminding you, you you've been through worse than this. And look at you. You okay. You made it through. Then deliverance to the captives. The gospel sets us free. People with demon spirits or those that are oppressed by evil spirits cannot endure sound doctrine. That's the number one sign that somebody has a demon. Nobody is going to sit in this church over a long period of time and stay here with demons. The Bible said the day would come when they wouldn't be able to sit through sound doctrine. Amen. So demon spirit, the Bible said they will not be able to endure sound doctrine, but we heap up on themselves preachers that will preach what they want to hear. It basically preach what won't rile up the spirits that's in them. Yeah. Yeah. Because if truth is coming and the truth of the word is coming and an actual solution to your issues is being preached, then if a demon is in you, he don't want you getting help. So you're going to find a reason to leave or get away from it or turn it off. 
They will search for a way out to avoid the change that is occurring in them. But those that can endure it will change their lives forever and receive the last hour anointing of God in their lives. This last hour anointing, if you can make it through, if you can endure, look at somebody and say, make it through. Make, if you can endure, there is an end times anointing. His word says he's going to pour it out, his spirit upon all flesh. Empower you for this moment. He's going to recover or recovering of sight to the blind. Jesus physically opened blinded eyes. We know that, right? But spiritually, he opened the world's eyes to the truth of God. Some of them didn't want their eyes open, and so they killed him. This last hour anointing keeps us from darkness and causes us to see things differently than the world sees them. Isn't that funny? I've had so many of y'all tell me, email me different things, tell me, say, man, I got to go around this person, that person, and man, they believe everything they see on TV. They believe COVID is out there with arms and legs snatching folks. Yes. This last hour anointing keeps us from darkness and causes us to see things differently than the world sees them. We don't follow the news we are not programmed by the media, and we do not believe what the narratives are saying. The gospel liberates us from the hive mind, collective consciousness, and allows us to be led by what? Spirit of God. <laughs> I don't care what you show me. I don't care what you're trying to program. I, no, man, I, the Spirit of God is going to tell me the truth. Over time, I'm going to know the truth behind it. And then it's going to set at liberty them that are bruised. Most of us have had trauma in our past. Anybody had trauma in their past? We have been victims of what? Violations, abandonment, neglect, and abuse. All of us. Our upbringings, most of us in here, were less than ideal. Amen, somebody? How many of you grew up on the rough side of the mountain? Amen. Even when your mama thought it was the smooth side. Mama, no. <laughs> mama, no. This is rough. But the gospel of Jesus gives us power over our past. That, that deserved a clap. Thank you, Brother Andre. That, somebody should have clapped. Gives us power over our past. So your upbringing, look at somebody say, your upbringing doesn't matter. Quit using that as an excuse. Quit using what happened to you as an excuse. Our upbringings were less than ideal, many of us. But the gospel of Jesus gives us power over our past. <clears throat> the gospel tells us that we can forgive and that we are forgiven no matter what the devil says. Listen, you can forgive. <laughs> what are we even talking about? Most of the time, if you really think about what you're mad about, and listen, here's, here's what you have to do. Don't think about what you're mad. If you got an offense, you're mad at somebody, don't think about it. Write it down. Write it down. And write it exactly like you feel it. Why you are upset and angry at this person. But this person has just done something. Write it down. As you're writing, you'll be like, Let me enhance this a little bit because this is just not enough to justify why I'm so angry. That's because you're not mad at that. There's something else. There's something else. Amen. And the gospel in here is going, we're going, you, you're going to find out what it is. And on that great and terrible day, there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You're not going to like it because you're going to figure out that it's you. Not what somebody did to you. It's you. Can I keep preaching in here? Oh, folk looking. Oh, it's the truth. It's you. It's, if it wasn't you, then God wouldn't be able to hold you accountable for it. You're going to be judged based on you, not what people did. How you handle what people did. When Jesus stood up and preached the first sermon, the Beatitude, 
He preached just how to handle what people do to you. Blessed are the pure in heart. Have a pure heart. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Then he went down even further and started talking about the the, the black lives. (laughs) Blessed are ye when men persecute you. Speak all manner of evil against you. But the gospel tells us that we can forgive and that we are forgiven. Look at somebody and say, you're forgiven. You know, when you repent to the Lord, to think that he's going to hold something against you insults all that he went through for you. He paid the price and his blood is more powerful than any sin. Amen. Amen. So he can forgive you no matter what you've done. So you can forgive and you can be forgiven according to the gospel. No matter what the devil says. We that believe will see Jesus. Amen. How many of you believe you're going to see Jesus? Summary. The last day's anointing also proclaimed. This is the last thing. The year of the Lord's favor. That's the God favors those that he loves. Right now. God is favoring those that are willing to trust in him. Yeah. He's surveying the land. Who's falling for the dumb stuff? Who's falling for the foolishness? Who's just, he's looking. If I can find me some people that would just believe and trust and have faith, he's going to favor them. God favors those that he loves. Right now, God is favoring those that are willing to trust in him. Those that will forsake the world, the opinions of others, the works of the flesh, and gain favor in this last hour. Forsake the world. But this next one, forsake the opinions of others. You won't make it in this last day if the opinions of others way heavy on you a true believer has to go and live against the grain christianity is a counter culture it's against the grain it's an uphill climb it is the rough side of the mountain the world makes it easy for its own the bible says the world loves its own but he said The world will hate you because it hated him. So that means your your, your climb is going to be just a little more difficult. It's not going to be as easy. You won't get as many views and likes on the internet. The internet don't like you and don't want you on there. Can I preach in here? Yes! It's just not going to happen. People aren't going to embrace you the way they embrace the world. Why? Because you're in a counterculture. But if you're willing to go through that and not care, and we all care, but you can't care. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it don't feel good, but you can't care about that. You can't get caught up in that. You're going to have to go against the green. Those that will forsake the world. The opinions of others and the works of the flesh. You're going to forsake sin. Amen. You ain't going to be sitting up with a habitual sin and falling in sin all the time. Not in the last days. Well, you crazy to do that anyway. Amen. Lord, I could come back like the old for you say any minute. You can't, you can't toss the weed <laughs> when the trumpet sound. <laughs> Trying to crush the black and mild. When the trumpet sound. <laughs> Drop the gin bottle. Oh, psh. <laughs> Whose was that? <laughs> when the trumpet sound. <laughs> Amen. But it could happen any day. And I'm not saying that to scare you or anything, but this stuff is going crazy. 
you got to live right so you can have the protection of the Holy Ghost. God ain't protecting you while you sneaking in. Amen. Creeping. <laughs> Ducking and dodging. Amen. That's how you gain favor in this last hour. Good health, prosperity, and sound families will be the result of us trusting in him and not allowing the enemy to stop us. The word has, look at somebody say the word has spoken. The word has spoken. When the spirit of the Lord is upon me, I will preach the gospel. And the gospel will do all that the script. It's going to do all that the scripture says. The gospel is going to do all that the scripture says, including the year of the Lord's favor. So repent and believe the gospel and you will have God's favor in this last hour. Amen. Luke 4 and 20. And at the end of this, the Bible says, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister. He gave it back to the minister and then Jesus sat down. And now the Bible says, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were what? Fasten on him. <laughs> Looking at him. And then Jesus, and he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Everyone stand to your feet. But right now, there is an end time, last hour anointing that God has for his people. We would be so misled to believe that in this last hour, with all this foolishness going on, that God is not concerned about us. All of this foolishness that's going on is going on because of us. Look, y'all, it's just basic logic. If the only thing that can stop the devil's works is the power of God, and the power of God is in us, and the devil is the God of this world, who is he going to attack? Wouldn't he shut the church down, discourage and steal the faith of believers? Wouldn't you do that so that they can't really pray for a breakthrough because they are faithless? I mean, if you're the devil, what else could this be about? Is it about evil? Then who is that? The devil. And who are we? Who is the devil against? Y'all, this is about us. Yes. This whole, everything you see happening, the whole world turning upside down is about us. And it's about the enemy trying to stop us. Because we have answers. Because the spirit of the Lord has the answers. And we have the spirit. So this outpouring, why wouldn't he? He's thinking about us. He's concerned about us. He loves us in this hour when all hell is breaking loose in our world. He's thinking about us. God knew all that was going to happen. He's thinking about us. He's mindful of us. You and me. You and me. That's how precious we are to him. So we have to put ourselves in the position so that God can give us his power in this hour. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. God, we believe that this is the last hour. We believe we're at the end times. Father God, we believe that our world will never be the same. Things have happened that have changed our world forever. It's just not the same. It won't be the same. But Father, we believe that you don't change. And that your word does not change. And that you are still mindful of us. You still love us. You still care for us. And you are still protecting us. And you are still pouring your spirit out upon us. It gives you pleasure, God, to live through us. 
It gives you pleasure, God, to empower us. It gives you pleasure, Lord, to brag on us. Just like you, all through the word, how you cared so much for the men that cared about you. And Father, in this last hour, that has not changed. You really care. So I pray, Lord, that your spirit will fall upon all that are under my voice. Father God, that we will receive the richness of your spirit. That your spirit will come and answer all of our issues, all of our problems, everything that we need, every answer that we need. Father God, let your spirit reside in us, upon us, so that we can receive everything. And in this end times, God, give us your favor. We thank you for caring and loving us. And we thank you, Father God, for empowering us to keep going. And we will continue by faith to walk this out. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, lift your hands up even higher. Father, I pray right now that your spirit will rest upon your people. Father God, I pray right now that even as we gather, even on Wednesday for prayer and and fasting, Lord, we are seeking you and your power in this hour. There's so much deception, but we won't fall for the strong delusion. There's so much going on, but we will stay the course. Father God, help us, Lord, to stand strong, planted like that tree by the rivers of living water and not be moved to be unshakable, unbreakable, unmovable in this hour so that we will be standing where you would have us stand when you return. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.